Before we get into this episode of Questions from Subs, I gotta give a special shout out to some of the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members. And you'll know who they are because they have that nice star next to their name in the comment section. But anyway, shout out to DJ Troop Peak, uh, Hassani Warren, uh, Mr. Fox, uh, my guy Edmund Bolds. He actually became a channel member like right before the Jaguars and Ravens game. I wonder if after the game he probably changed his mind. But anyway, uh, Rodney Too, uh, Juan Gamaro, and Matthew uh levi so appreciate y'all thank you now somebody else who be thanking the ravens is the titans because you know ravens like give me all the titans in the world i need all of them i want all of them and i'm gonna have all of them first question came from my guy gareth he said hey raven how's things hey things are pretty good i appreciate you g and, and appreciate you being a team keep it clean patron as well he said hope you and your family are doing well my question is with us being <laughs> He said, without being so bad in the red zone, do you think we need to start putting three tight end sets so we would have more options for jump balls? Because our wide receivers are not really tall enough. Uh, I hope this wasn't a stupid question. Oh, no, nah, it's not at all. Um, you want more options. You want more diversity with your offense. Uh, you want to be able to do more. You should want to be able to do more. Um, yeah, the Ravens, most of their wide receivers, are um, they're pretty short. Right now, I mean, you got Deshaun Jackson. And just because you're short don't mean you can't get open there. Uh, and just because you're short don't mean you can, still can't make plays. Because it's crazy because, um, remember Hollywood? Hollywood was like, what, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, five, I think? He was a red zone threat. Because him and Lamar Jackson, they just had that chemistry. And that's, that's what it's about the most, having that chemistry. Um, but it's also about having that variety, too. Uh, so, um, obviously, Mark Andrews is always a red zone threat, uh, always a red zone target as well. Um, Josh Oliver we saw last week So yeah um, But yeah Charlie Kolar whenever he comes back Isaiah Likely uh, When he actually no When Charlie Kolar makes his debut And when Isaiah Likely comes back uh, You got those guys Nick Boyle um, He don't get no carries or nothing No like yeah uh, No no pass attempts I mean um, No no targets I, I'm, I'm talking about carries like yeah running back or something no passes, He ain't get no targets So it's um it's early in the morning. My mind ain't functioning all the way yet. Maybe because it's a new month. I ain't used to being in December yet. Because I'm recording this on December 1st, but, I mean, you're seeing this probably, like, maybe on the 2nd or the 3rd or the 4th. I don't know when you're going to see it. But anyway, um, so, yeah, you got you got a bunch of tight ends. Like, you got a bunch of tight ends. They just signed Shamar Bridges, but I, I wouldn't expect him to get any uh, any work early on. Um, maybe, like... Like, I wouldn't expect him to get anything like this first week. Obviously not. He, he literally just got here. I wouldn't really expect it the second week either. I mean, I'm not really expecting much. My expectations are, are, are low. I, my, my hopes are high, but my expectations are low uh, for how they use Shamar Bridges. Um, and Benjamin Victor, he got size too, but he just, they keep him on the practice squad. So. They like their guys. They like their guys. But, yeah, they certainly love their tight ends. So, yeah, I wouldn't be mad if they did that. I mean, with the way that the thing things been going in the red zone, it, it certainly couldn't hurt. Uh, and he said, "P.S. Sorry, I haven't sent in a question for a while. Shout out from Ireland. Forgot to tell you. Uh, this is where I'm from. Thanks for reading my question. Keep being great. Not oh, not, <laughs> he said not long until sixty thousand. And that's crazy because we um he sent this. When did he send this? Oh, he sent this on December first. So he sent this today, uh, early in the morning. And we we yeah we just like literally just hit sixty thousand subscribers." Um, yesterday So yeah Channel's still small But I really appreciate All y'all for being Such a big part of it Yeah this feels like a dream And you know just what I mean You see my boy He like gotta made it How to made it Boy he's a fan And he like the Ravens Like the Ravens And you know just what I mean You two team Keep it clean You see my boy He like gotta make it Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, check the description for all of that. It's all in there. I love y'all. Let's keep it going. Next question came from my guy Vinny. He said, Raven season stretch run. Hey, Raven, hope you are doing well and having a good week. Just wanted your opinion on how you feel these last six weeks of the season will progress. Heading down the stretch for the Ravens. I'm really hoping they get back to the playoffs this year after missing out last year with all the injuries. I think they certainly will. I think they'll, de they'll definitely be in the playoffs. Lamar, as long as Lamar's healthy, I think they will definitely be in the playoffs. Now, um, as of this recording, yesterday, he they said he had a quad injury. 
Thinking, oh, a quad injury. Okay, okay. All right, let's see how that progresses. But yeah, as long as Lamar is good to go, then they'll be good to go. He said, I think if the defense just finishes at the end of games, Lamar makes some faster decisions at times under pressure with confidence. I think they can finish strong with an 11 and 6 record. Okay, so losing two more games and winning the other ones uh, and get to the playoffs. And who knows what can happen from there? I know it'll be a challenge, but I'd love to see Lamar stay a Raven for his career. Oh, we certainly would. I don't think it's happening, but we certainly would love it. Um, he said, I want him to succeed and finish this year strong, leaving the Ravens no choice but to pay him. I know he hasn't had the offensive receiver weapons the last few seasons, but I still believe they can get creative with tight ends to run game and make the receivers they have look better by doing some more creative play action and Lamar just being a little faster with deciding if he's going to run or throw during a play. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, let me just finish. He said, plus if the Ravens have a faster pace huddles and not let the play clock go down to one second, Lamar will be able to read defenses better. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your week. Let's get back on track. Yeah, hopefully the Ravens can get back on track. Um, the quick passing game, um, the up-tempo offense, uh, those are small things that make big differences. Um, they have led to a lot of success for the Baltimore Ravens over the past couple of years, um, but it seems that the Ravens don't want to stick with that. And I, I, I always say, I say it every week, I feel like we talk about, with the up-tempo offense, a faster-paced offense, you don't got to run it 24-7 because it, it, it's about situational and stuff. Like, you ain't got, like, it, with three minutes to go in a game, even three, four minutes to go in a game, you're up by 10, you're not going to be running no fast-paced offense. No, you're going to be taking your time. But sometimes, like, at the beginning of the game, uh, if it's a close game, even if it's not a close game, you, you trying to get points. Pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. Get this thing moving. Now, as far as um, he talked about, he feel like we, we could be good enough with the running backs, the tight ends, uh, and the receivers that we have, um, and just getting the most use, that, use out of them. I mean, that's what you want, but this scheme doesn't call for stuff like that, Not at least not consistently. It just they, they, a, lot, a lot with this, this Ravens scheme, they, um, there's a lot of inconsistency with it because it's like you – a guy will go off, a guy will be a playmaker one week. Then the next week it's like, oh, why, why will we make him a playmaker again? For what? No. And it's like, and a lot of times it's, it's just it's the Ravens getting in their own way. So if they can get out of their own way, oh, man, the sky would be the limit for this team. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully they can get out of their own way. They still got time. They got time. I mean, they're 7-4. They they're 7-4. Could have been 8-3. and three. They, But they're 7-4. Could have been nine and two, but they seven and four. Could have been ten and one, but they seven and four. Could have been eleven and zero. Oh. Hold up, now wait a minute, buddy. Next question came from my guy Sam, and I, I appreciate these new people sending in questions too. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam. I'm just getting off work, heading home, and listening to your video about the possibility." Of Roman getting a Stanford job uh, You got to the part about a new OC Likely not being able to make an impact On the passing game because of the Ravens philosophy I 100% agree Largely the reason why I'm all for an entire overhaul Of the front office and coaches Now to the question We all heard about the anonymous tip Talking about how much Roman emphasized And works heavily in the run game at practice Oh no, that wasn't even an anonymous tip uh, I remember uh, Mark Ingram, he talked about that he said, he said they work like, I don't remember the exact number he said, but he said they work like on a lot of running plays all the time in practice. But the passing game was sort of like an afterthought. But anyway, he said, do you think Roman's schematic preference also has a negative effect on our secondaries in game performance against teams with top tier receivers and a decent passing attack? Ooh, that is such a great question. Wow. That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. Wow. Because they going against this basic, Simple offense, especially in a passing game. But <laughs> like it's, 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 all, it's all easy for them to cover in practice. But then when they face better quarterbacks, better offenses, mm, wow. That, oh, I like that one. Now, um, they they have faced some nice quarterbacks even early on, like with Josh Allen. They held it down against him, and with Joe Burrow, they held it down against him. So, but I guess consistently, because they they don't do it consistently. Because Trevor Lawrence, would anybody think that Trevor Lawrence is this top tier elite quarterback and something like that? No, <laughs> but Raven sure made him look like one. Um, so, yeah, that that could actually be a part of it. Wow. He said, we always talk about how iron sharpens iron when the ones 
on offense go against the ones on defense. We can't tell our receivers aren't getting as many reps they need because of lack of chemistry between them and Lamar, especially on deep routes. Uh, I don't think many of us stop to think about how the DBs don't get as many reps to be sharp enough for quality game performance. I know they are professionals, but all professionals need reps during practice or training to be at p- a peak professional level, especially for Peters, who is returning to the field after missing a whole season of football. Flock has been very hard on the secondary, as they should, but maybe Roman's presence is a much bigger issue than we thought. Oh, man. Wow. That's oof. Side note, I'm glad you mentioned catch radius when it comes to shorter receivers. A decent amount of Lamar's overthrows could have been completions if the receiver had a wider catch radius. So you you were just you just on fire with this whole email, man. Next question came from my guy William. He said, and Graven, as someone who has been a Louisville Cardinals fan my whole life, I watched Lamar play for probably eight years. When he was in college, I never watched the NFL. When he got drafted to the Ravens, I love the team and I've always been excited to watch the NFL every Sunday, especially the Ravens. But with Lamar's contract situation, the future doesn't look too hot. Am I considered a bandwagon if I support the team he goes to? I love the Ravens, and I would probably be heartbroken if he left, but I have to prepare for anything, LOL. Also, I love the Team Keep It Clean community as well and hope to be able to see Lamar play in Baltimore uniform for more years to come. Hey, don't we all? Um, hopes are different than expectations, but don't we all? Hey, and, and as far as the whole bandwagon thing, you think... If you're a Lamar fan, you're a Lamar fan. If you're a Ravens fan, you're a Ravens fan. If you just follow Lamar wherever he goes, that's cool too. Please don't don't let no because it's, it's some people that just they're like, oh, you a fake fan if you do this, you a fake fan if you do that, or you're a bandwagon this bandwagon. Who cares? Don't let nobody kill your vibe on how you enjoy watching football, watching Lamar, watching the Ravens, watching wherever Lamar ends up going. Can't nobody tell you how to be a fan Can nobody tell you how to enjoy What you enjoy So you keep doing your thing And you enjoy it to the fullest Next question came from my guy Dominique He said too much of the same Ain't great long time subscriber First time writer here Love what you're doing Keep up the good work Appreciate it Dominique He said we're just curious If you ever go back and watch Old vids of yourself I stumbled across a gem of yours Titled is Ravens OC Greg Roman Becoming a Problem in Baltimore From two years ago In the vid you read an article about Giro from 2013 During his 49ers days uh, everything, everything in the article applied to the t- to the then 2020 Raven situation with Greg Roman. Sadly, not much has changed. Even some of the game and analysis you made is identical to, d- to today's Ravens. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, most of the observations still remain valid today, though I'm sure those same observations would not be made as optimistically as today. Now, I think you should go back and rewatch that vid and answer the question that you asked in the original video, is he a problem? Now, because again, long time subscriber, I know you're going to say philosophy is the problem, but we had over a decade of winning seasons with a few bad ones sprinkled in using that philosophy. And clearly Greg Roman has literally been criticized from coast to coast for the same deficiencies for about a decade now. So is he the problem? I think you should go rewatch it your, yourself before you answer that. Uh, and he said, uh, glad I finally found a legitimate reason to write in. LOL. Hope you have a blessed day, man. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Um, so I, I have to go check that out. Now, philosophy is a big issue. I, I see what you're saying with Greg Roman. And yeah, Ravens have had winning seasons without Greg Roman before that. But the reason that I speak so much about the philosophy is more so because of Lamar Jackson. Obviously, everything runs through Lamar Jackson, but that's it. Literally, everything runs through Lamar Jackson. Runs. Um, the Ravens, the reason why I, I speak so much in favor of the Ravens needing to upgrade their philosophy is because they've literally wasted years of having somebody so special at the quarterback position. They've wasted years. They have not maximized Lamar Jackson at all. That's why I speak so much about the philosophy being the biggest issue with this thing. Because if, if you... And, and, and especially because we see so many other teams across the league, they, they find these special quarterbacks, even quarterbacks that don't even seem as, as half as special as Lamar Jackson. But these teams still be like, you know what? We're going to go all in. We're going to get the most out of this quarterback, whether we think they're good or bad. We, we are going to go all in to really have all of our questions answered and any of our doubts put to sleep. So it, but the Ravens have not done that with Lamar Jackson. So yeah, Greg Roman, he do, he is has been an issue himself, but that's why I say it's much bigger than Greg Roman. It's on a much larger scale than just Greg Roman. 
The last question on this episode came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? I know that Greg Roman and Stanford News is the latest hot topic here in Baltimore. I saw your video regarding that, and I agree with you. My take is, if Roman leaves in whatever capacity, getting a new job or fired, the Ravens will no doubt uh, promote James Urban to be offensive coordinator. You speak all the time about Harbaugh and his loyalty to his friends. Harbaugh and Urban work together with the Eagles. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Well. Wow. Okay. He said Harbaugh and Urban worked together with the Eagles and coach Andy Reid brought Urban in as the quarterback's coach. Urban later went to the Bengals as a wide receiver coach during those years when AJ Green and company were killing us. I say all that to say Urban is more than ready for the job. He learned from one of the best offensive minds in Reeds and knows the West Coast system in and out. He knows how to get high production from the wide receiver position and he will run his scheme, not Romans. I know all this is hypotheticals at this point, but what are your thoughts on my take? Ah. Uh, I don't know, I'm just, if it's James Urban, um, I mean, right now, I'm just, I, for me, that would be, that would be underwhelming, um, simply because he's already been under this scheme so much. Uh, he, yeah, he's he's been under this scheme for a long time as a quarterback's coach. So, I mean, I feel like it would be a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, he could put his own spin on it, but... Um, I don't know. I guess we really wouldn't really know till we know. Uh, I would just, and it's so tricky because it was not even tricky. That again, philosophy. I keep speaking philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. As long as Harbaugh is a coach, it's gonna be a lot of the same. But I just, um, if if he ended up hiring one of his friends, which is most likely he will hire one of his friends and whatnot. I just wish it wasn't like that. I just wish it would be somebody like. On the outside, somebody brand new, somebody who could bring some, like, I know a lot of people have been talking about, like, T. Martin. Um, I don't think he's ever been an offensive coordinator before. But I actually think that um, if you're going to hire somebody you know, might as well be him. Because he never been an offensive coordinator before. I don't think so. Um, oh, hold up. No, I don't think he's been an offensive coordinator before. But regardless, well, he ain't ever been an offensive coordinator in the NFL before. So, you ain't got no film on him. He ain't got no film on him. And he could, he obviously would be bringing something new. But at the same time, I keep saying, whoever they hire, Ravens could tell, like, look, this is what we do. This is what we want to do. This is how we want our offense to look. This is what we want to run. This is what our focal point is on our offense. Can you do that? Will you do that? That's what we need you to do. If you can't do it, then if you're not going to do it, then no, this ain't the place for you. So I just... Again, the whole Greg Roman thing, yeah, okay, Greg Roman could leave, but what's really going to change from the Baltimore Ravens once Greg Roman leaves? What's going to be, is it going to be that much of a significant change as far as the offense? I, I would hope, I would really hope, but it all it all just depends on how they go about this thing, man. The, the, the biggest change would have to come from, from Harbaugh, and he would really have to be willing to adapt and if he wasn't willing to adapt when Lamar was under this, this cheap deal, even though I don't think Lamar is going to be here next year, um, if he wasn't willing to adapt when Lamar was cheap, why would he adapt? Why would things change if Lamar was getting paid? Say, for instance, Raven signed Lamar to this big deal. Then what, what's going to change with their strategy? What's going to change with their roster building? What's going to change with their philosophy? What's going to change? What's going to be different? I don't expect nothing to be different. And then they could use his contract as an excuse. Oh, that's how we, yeah, we can't get any more talent at the wide receiver position. We can't, we can't do that. We can't upgrade there. So, and it's, so I mean, yeah, if James Urban ends up being the guy, we'll see. Um, so my expectations, they, they honestly really wouldn't be too high if that happened. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.